Hey guys, it's me Cruel back again with another video on this channel and today we have part 4 of the K-Pop Rewind 2020. Today we got a top 10 of, in my opinion, the best albums of this year and I've listened to over 190 albums, to be exact, 192 albums this year. So it's a lot, a lot of albums. I don't even count single albums and stuff like that. So at least mini album up to full albums. There's actually more than 10 albums in this top 10 list and the reason for that is that some albums have the same score and if you want to know how the score came to be, then, um, well, I will explain it at the end of the video and I will also leave a link to uh, two Google spreadsheets in the comment section of this video where you can check out more um, about my reasoning, about my math and uh, also you can check out all of my other album ratings that didn't make it in this top 10. We're gonna start with three honorable mentions. I just quickly will go over them and these three honorable mentions are actually the albums from 13th to 11th in this ranking. Uh, we got with number 13, Woods with Equal. This is Wood's first mini album and the first of the two mini albums that he had this year and in my opinion the better one. This one was really freaking good. Um, in my opinion my favorite song on that album is Lift Up. Then we got on number 12 and the second honorable mention Blackpink's The Album. Um, yeah, one of the best Blackpink albums, maybe even the best album that they ever did. And I really enjoy it. I actually really like most of the songs except two probably, which are Ice Cream and uh, the Cardi B song, which I think is Bet You Wanna, right? Something like that. But my favorite is probably Love Sickles, either that or Love To Hate Me or Pretty Savage. I actually don't know. Or one of the three though. And the third honorable mention goes to NCT's Resonance Part 1 and 2 combined. Um, I just combined both ratings together because I listened to this album together as well and I personally liked Part 2 a little bit more than Part 1 but both of them together made it on number 11 and almost in the top 10. Right, now we're starting officially the top 10 and I'm gonna play like my favorite song of one of these albums in the background while I talk about it. On number 10 we got actually three albums at the same time. We got Noir with Up The Sky, we got DKB with Love and we got Yua with Bon Voyage. So to me these three albums are interesting because all three of them in my opinion are very very underrated. I think Yua's Bon Voyage might still be like the most popular one out of these three but especially DKB's Love and especially Especially Noir's Up The Sky are so 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 unknown and underrated that I just want you guys to encourage to listen to this like especially Noir's Up The Sky is such a good album like please freaking listen to this this is so good like literally um, DKB's Love is a very vibey album almost kind of cutesy that's why I was very surprised that I like it so much but I actually just do and then for you's Bon Voyage it's amazing um, I've never imagined her voice to be like this and it's fantastic. Coming in at number 9 we got Boa with a 10th full album called Better. Yeah, this one only came out recently and I have actually filmed an album review to this one on my Patreon. So if you want to check that one out you can do that by clicking the link to my Patreon in the description of this video. Um, shameless plug I know but yeah, Boa's Better, really really good album. There's not really like standout songs on this album but if I had to name like favorites then it's probably Cut Me Off and All That Jazz. Um, the title track Better is actually my second least favorite on this album, so if you like the title track already, you will love this album. It's so freaking good. Coming in at number 8, we have actually four albums on the same shared spot. First up, we got Hin with When I Tell You Goodbye. Second is Girls in the Park with The Keys. Third is Jesse's Nunu Nana. And fourth is Pentagon's Universe The Black Hall, which is Pentagon's full album earlier this year with title track Dr. Bebe. And yeah, all four of these albums I find fantastic. I personally think probably that Pentagon's Universe The Black Hall is the best album of this list. So Girls in the Park's The Keys album has only four songs, that's why it's a little bit lower on the than it could be with more songs. The average rating on this album was actually making this album I think my number four spot but because I actually value the number of songs on each album um, relatively to the average and there's a whole formula and math that I used for this on my Google spreadsheet. That's the reason why Girls in the Parks The Keys is only on this spot on number eight but I still really love it and After the Bloom Alone is definitely my favorite song of these four albums. It's such a good song. It's crazy good. Coming in at number 7 we got two different albums. You got Itzy's It's Me and Ice One's Bloom Is. Yeah, It's Me was my favorite Itzy uh, album of this year. Not Shy is actually not at all an album that I like and to be honest the same goes for Ice One's Oniric Diary and also the most recent album. Both of them are like mm, meh to like mm, okay but none of them is really as good as Bloomis in my opinion. Bloomis had some outstanding songs on here. Obviously Fiesta is my favorite song on this album. Uh, well, not obviously, but for me that's obvious. But I also really, really like Aya Ya, You and I and Someday. And yeah, Ice One's Bloomis was also my first album that I've heard of 2020. Uh, it came out in early January. 
I think, and I I definitely think it's not the first album that came out this year, but the first one that I actually have heard this year. So that kind of holds a special place in my heart because it started the whole journey of 192 albums that I all rated relatively to each other. So yeah, a whole ass journey with a lot of work, a lot of time investment, and this album started it. Coming in number six, we got Mama Moose Travel. Yeah, Mama Moose Travel, a very, very solid album, honestly. I don't dislike any songs on this album. I at first didn't like Aya, the title track, that much, which to me was like shocking and kind of worrying too. Before I actually listened to the B-sides, I was like, oh no, I could not like this album and that would be a first for Mama Moo. I actually like all Mama Moo albums. And I still didn't like Aya after the first or two uh, album listens, but it grew on me more. So now it's also my playlist and my favorite song on this album actually is Good Night Though and uh, closely followed by Chuck. Coming at number five, we got An Yin with OOO or Triple O. Also an album of the first quarter, this is Onion's OOO or Triple O, I don't actually know how to call it, but yeah, it is a kind of a full album, it has 9 songs, and yeah, this album is so pretty, I really love it. She is a vocalist that most people here probably don't even know, um, she's not an idol at all, although she is actually a really big Neverland, so idol fangirl, um, which is funny to me because she does a lot of horror music and is like this very major person and she's like a fan of Idol. I don't know why that is uh, funny to me, but it just kind of is. I still support that though, of course. And yeah, my favorite song on this album by far is Octopus Dream, which is uh, probably the weirdest song on this album and also the song that stands out the most from all of the other songs and is probably a song that doesn't even fit the theme of this album. But anyways, I just really love it. It's super bright, it makes me happy. So yeah, I enjoy it a lot and this album is fantastic. Please listen to it if you have never heard it, please. And now we have the top four and all of these four albums actually are very, very close to each other. Um, I guess the top two are a little bit ahead, but especially number three and four are so, so, so close to each other. They could be interchangeable. And yeah, starting off with number four is BTS Map of the Soul 7. Also one of the earliest albums this year and in my opinion, number four and the fourth best album. It's really freaking good. It's one of my favorite BTS albums. I don't really know. Um, I have not like ranked them between each other, but it is in my top three BTS albums of all time together with Love Is Left Here and probably You Never Walk Alone. I really like seven. I really like it. And yeah, my favorite song on this album is by far Louder Than Bombs, although I also really like Uh or Ah, I don't know how to pronounce it, this, this rap song, as well as Black Swan. Um, those are my top three. Um, I guess very honorable mention goes to Zero O'Clock, which is fantastic too. And I have not evaluated the songs of the Persona um, album that were included in 7 as well. So this rating is solely based on the new songs on this album. If I were to include the Persona songs, which is interesting to me because I thought I didn't like that album, but uh, the rating would be higher actually. So that's interesting. It uh, would put BTS on number 2 on this list, but now they're on number 4. It is what it is. I still really love this album though, don't get me wrong. And now we're entering the top 3 with number 3. Dreamcatcher's Dystopia, Lose Myself. This album is fantastic. It is only five songs, it's a mini album, but it's so freaking good. I think Dear is the only song on this that I still like, but didn't playlist. All of the other songs, incredible, especially Break the Wall and Boca. I love them so much. I, I, I can't say enough how much Dreamcatcher rocked my world in 2020. And this album is the proof of that, somewhat. Um, you'll see later what I mean by that, but yeah, I love this album, so good. Coming in number two, we got Hwasa with Maria. Yeah, for the longest time this album was my favorite album of the year and if I didn't invent a new formula for my rating of the albums, then Hwasa's Maria would be number one, but it got beaten by an album that has a bit more songs than Hwasa's Maria and is still consistently very, very good. So it slightly got etched out by number one, but yeah, this is absolute masterpiece, both of these albums that are number one and number two. And Hwasa's Maria in its whole, from start to finish, tells a story, it's very complete, it's very satisfying, it is very emotional. Please listen to this album if you haven't yet. It's absolutely groundbreaking, fucking good. And now we're at number one. This is the album of the year of 2020, for me at least. You can have a different opinion. And it's again Dreamcatcher with Dystopia, the Tree of Language. Yeah, yet again another January album. I think it was January or early February, but very, very early on. And I really enjoyed this album. Like, uh, I mean, it's number one, but holy shit, this album is great. I actually have two songs on this album that I dislike, which is interesting, but all of the other songs, wow, amazing, I love it. There's so many songs on this that I, I listen to all day, and some of them are my most listened to um, songs this year. 
Um, there's Scream, there's In the Frozen, there's Red Sun, there's Jasper. Even Paradise is amazing, Sahara is amazing, Tension is amazing. I even like Black or White now, even though I didn't for the longest time. And then there's Over the Sky, which is pretty cool. And there's Full Moon and Daybreak, which I don't really feel, but uh, if people like them, that's cool. And yeah, that is my favorite album of the year. I think this is pretty clearly the best one, to me at least. Um, Hazus Maria, I guess, was very close, but I think Dreamcatcher deserves this one. Um, I think they, they definitely were the artist of the year to me as well, if I had to pick one. Because it's just two best albums of the year in the top three for me. Like, how could I not pick Dreamcatcher, right? Like, no other group even made it, or artist made it even twice in my top 15. So, what can I do, right? Like, it's definitely deserved in my opinion. And yeah, fantastic album. If you haven't heard it yet, you should definitely. And that is my list for 2020. Um, let me know what you think of this. And do you agree with some choices do you disagree please let me know everything in the comments of this video and also let me know your guys's favorite albums of the year again this is only my opinion you know you don't have to like it but if you don't like it please stay neutral please just don't hate it doesn't make any sense to do that i don't care what you say i love my albums that i love right you can love what you love i support like everyone's tastes right so if you like it's just not shy the most of this year then it's totally fine to me even though it's probably an album that didn't even make my top 50 this year it's totally fine to me because whatever you enjoy, that's totally your thing. And I'm happy for you that you enjoy that. I don't enjoy an album though, so that's just me, right? And yeah, that's it from my video today with number 4 for K-Pop Rewind 2020. We're coming back tomorrow for the last one actually, which is K-Pop Rewind number 5. And maybe most of you guys know what that could be because it's the only one that I didn't do yet. It kind of makes sense um, for it to be the last one. And yeah. Look forward to that one. I also have two more videos coming up after that, which is the day after tomorrow, um, on the 31st. But yeah, that's not really related to K-pop that much. It's more to my channel and yeah, if you want to watch those, you can definitely do as well. It's some announcements, I guess. That's it for me. Have a nice day. See you next one and peace.